Hello everybody, my name is Josh and welcome to the bonus video for the Mega Man LP. In this video we're going to be talking about the development of Mega Man as well as some of the unused things and regional differences in this game. Let's start with the development. Mega Man was Capcom's first game made for home consoles, as up to that point their games had all been made for arcades and then they ported these games to their home consoles. Capcom, Capcom decided to bring in some fresh talent for the game, leading to a six person development team. KJ Inafune designed and illustrated nearly all of the game's characters and enemies, as well as the Japanese Rockman logo, box art and instruction manual. The main inspiration for Mega Man's design came from Astro Boy, created by Osamu Tezuka. Mega Man's blue colour came from the NES's limited colour palette, as blue had the most shades, giving it a bit more detail. The team had considered many names, such as Mighty Kid, Knuckle Kid, and Rainbow Man, before settling on Rockman. From this choice, the names of many other characters came from a music motif, from the protagonist's original name, Rock, and his sister, Roll, being a play on rock and roll. The gameplay is inspired by Rock, Paper, Scissors, with each weapon from a Robot Master doing large damage to one other Robot Master. Mega Man's composer was Maname Matsume, who composed the music, sound effects, and programmed the data in three months. Matsume was challenged by the creative limits of three notes available at any one time, and when she was unable to write the songs, she created the sound effects. When the game was brought over to America for localization, the name was changed to Mega Man, purely because the Capcom senior vice president did not like the name Rockman, as such, the name was changed and was used outside of Japan. Now let's take a look at some unused content. There is not a lot of stuff, but there is some interesting things that we do have. First off, there is a bit of unused code in Mega Man. By using the Game Genie code PEXPIIAA, we'll re-enable a small bit of code. When holding A on controller 2 and landing on the ground, Mega Man will act as though he's been stunned by Gutsman's earthquakes. The purpose of this is completely unknown, the most likely reason being for testing purposes. There are unused sprites of Dr. Light talking and pointing upwards while wearing coloured pants. Note the used sprite in the credits has white pants. It's possible these sprites were meant to be used in the ending, but they could have been used anywhere. Lastly, the boss of Wily 2, the copy robot, has some unusual behaviour. Well, unusual not really, more unused behaviour. Normally the room is completely flat, with nothing in the way of you or the boss. However, if the room is modified using an editor to place solid obstacles, the copy robot goes to its jump script. This script is the same one used if the player presses the fire button. It's also of note that if the player presses fire while copy robot is falling, the jump script will still trigger, causing the copy robot to jump in mid-air. Lastly, we have a few regional differences. First, we have the most recognisable change. The Japanese title screen is completely different to the USA and European version. Aside from the complete overhaul, the NTSCU and PAL versions received a different logo, a staple of the series outside of Japan until Mega Man 8. To note, the sound effect that plays when selecting a robot master also plays when you press start in the Japanese version. Some sound effects in the power release are noticeably different because of the fact that the European version runs at 60 hertz for some reason. If you, I'm pretty sure if you, it's either you upscale the game to 60 hertz as PAL normally runs at 50 hertz. First off, we have the firing sound for the Mega Buster. First off, we have the USA and Japanese version, and next we have the European version. The firing sound effect for the default weapon is supposed to play an upward scale of 8 notes, but in the European version only 5 of these notes play, while the other 3 are replaced by a sequence of 5 notes being played at the lowest possible key. The end result makes it sound like the Mega Buster is buzzing every time it fires. The second sound effect that was changed is the landing effect. First we have the traditional NTSC versions, and then we have the European PAL version. The landing sound effect sounds quite different. It actually bears a close similarity to the landing noise heard in the first two Game Boy games, though this may just be a coincidence. Bizarrely, the European versions of these sounds ended up in the Rockman Complete Works version of Mega Man 1 on the PlayStation, and the version included on the PlayStation 2 slash GameCube compilation Mega Man Anniversary Collection. Finally, the very last thing that's different, 
The ending screen is different in all versions. The American release contains an out of place comma due to having omitted ink for some reason. While the Japanese version reads presented by Capcom, the European version reads presented by Capcom Co, comma, littered. While the USA version simply says presented by Capcom USA, comma, with nothing else. And that is literally everything for Mega Man's bonus stuff. Yeah, there isn't a lot here. And there was never going to be a lot here. As such, that ends the Mega Man LP. Next LP will begin as per usual on in a couple days' time. Until then, I will see you all next time. Goodbye!